What's up guys? Welcome to the Chess Giant. This is Solomon Ardell and in today's video we're covering one of the most funky, fun, and dangerous gambits to date against the move of e4, which actually starts out with the Alakine's defense. Right? We usually don't think of this move as super aggressive, but the e4 player is in for a surprise against e5. Black continues as usual with knight d5, but now against d4, which is the main move, we're not going to play the usual d6. Right, Chipping away at the center, by the way, there's nothing wrong with this. But we're now going to play b5. What on earth is going on? We play this very off-key and strange-looking move, simply hanging upon and entering into the O'Sullivan Gambit. Now, I have to admit, this opening is not sound. Right, You plug it into a computer program, it's going to tell you that white is a lot better. But that being said, that's how most gambits go. Right, Most gambits are not sound. Most gambits are simply you giving up material and getting attacking chances out of it. And on top of that, I think that this is one of the most dangerous gambits to date because the ideas are so unique. I've never seen a gambit quite like this one. First off, what does this move do? Right, what does this do? Well, first off, it does fight for the square of c4, which is very important. Usually, white wants to play c4 and kick our knight back, but now if they play c4, we're just going to take it, right? Trade off a b pawn for a c pawn. That's a good trade for black. What to do, though, against this move of bishop takes b5? This is really what we're going to be covering most of today's video. And by the way, this is the best option that white has, according to the computer. We're now going to play another off ball option with c5. And okay, let's go over. The options that white has we're going to be covering what happens if they take the pawn on c5 what happens if they play a move like c3 or c4 as well as bishop c4 in this position these are the most popular moves and things that you will see again and again if you do go with this gambit option first off why can't white just take on c5 this happens quite a bit but now white's simply losing because of queen a5 check Right, we're attacking the king and the bishop on b5. We're simply just going to take off this piece. Notice here if a move like knight c3, you do defend it for a moment, but okay, let's just take out the knight on c3 and then capture the bishop here. We are up a piece for two pawns, and this is some of the worst pawn structure I've ever seen in isolated and triple isolated pawns. This is not looking good for white, right? Going back to the move of queen a5. If here you play a move like bishop d2, we just win the bishop, right? What about a move like queen d2? This may seem to be a saving grace for white because now if we take on b5, they win a piece back. But this also falls into a trap because of bishop b7, a key idea attacking the queen. And no matter where this queen goes, we're simply going to be able to win this pawn on g2, right? And it's really not about winning the pawn. It's more about trapping this rook. This rook simply has nowhere to go. Y'all, we're about to be up four points of material. Black is simply crushing this. And finally, going back to queen a5, an interesting idea that white can try is actually knight d2. Whole idea being that if we take on b5, they can play c4. Yes, we are up one point material, but we are currently getting forked, right? There's a little center fork here attacking both our knight and our queen. But in this case, there's no need to panic. Simply snatch off that pawn on c5, snatch off the pawn on d5. And here we're obviously looking at the e5 pawn as well. But more than that, we're actually looking at g2, right? Again, if we can take on g2 and trap this rook, we're going to do that the first chance we get. Right. If you want to play something like queen f3, that's not going to work because we have queen takes e5 with check against the king, followed by knight c6 and black's big chill on there. What about knight g f3 defending this pawn on g2 by blocking the attack? Well, in that case, we have this key option of bishop a6. We got to fit this move in, preventing the white king from castling, and then from this point, getting great attacking chess. What should white do here? Well, let's say they try to trade down. Let's say they play a move like queen b3. By the way, this is the most popular option online, and it seems very logical, right? Why not just trade down with the queen? Y'all, we're not going to trade here, right? There's no reason. We are even a material now, but all that being said, we're the ones attacking. We don't want to simplify this game. We are trying to checkmate this king, and because of that, we're going to swing this queen over to a5 in Scandinavian defense type fashion. There's really no way... For black to kick this queen around i mean this knight can't even move at the moment if white does play something like queen c3 offering up another trade let's just play queen b5 right threatening a mate in one and if you stop it we're going to play knight c6 knight b4 on the way attacking c2 and d3 black here with a crushing attack so all that to say i'll go on back here if you take on c5 we just have queen a5 with check and uh, no matter how you cut it up black's a lot better so going back, I mean, look, if you take the pawn on c5, we're going to play queen a5 with check. And no matter how you cut that one up, black is much better. What about this move c4? This is also played quite a bit online. Well, in this case, we have a stunning move of c takes d4. Okay, now white here is trying to decide, okay, do I take the pawn or do I take the knight? Well, it's actually better to take the pawn. Okay, first off, if you do take the knight, again, this bishop is hanging, right? We play queen a5 with check. And the next move, we simply snatch the bishop off. 
And notice here, I mean, we got a great game after queen takes d5, right? Take off that pawn. We're defending d4, and we're going to be okay there. What about if white plays queen takes d4, though? What do we do in that situation? Well, we play bishop a6, threatening queen f1 with check, going after this king again. And notice you can't play a move like knight f3, and this does stop queen f1, but now you just hung e2, and we simply have ourselves a game over. See, I'll take it on d5 just isn't a good idea because you do win a piece, but we're going to win it right back, and we're going to have bishop a6 ideas. Great attacking chances for black there. What about the good move, though, of queen takes d4? Well, in this case, we're going to play knight b4, and again, white here has a superior position, right, if you plug it into computer program, but black wins this kind of game all the time. The most popular move here is knight a3. Let's first take a look at the best move, though, which is queen d1, okay? Yes, white is better, but they got to find very hard moves like queen d1. Usually, you know, you don't want to bring your queen all the way back to its starting square. In this case, though, we're going to continue with something like queen c7, right? And here, if a move like knight f3 defending the pawn, well, white's starting to fall into some trouble again. We play a6, right? Attacking the bishop, and once the bishop runs, we have queen takes c4, knight d3 check ideas in the air, bishop b7 on the way, quick development, and a very fun game for black. Going back to this move of knight b4, though, again, you're not going to see this move too often, and even if you do, you still have a fun game following queen c7, and hopefully a6 followed by queen captures on c4. What about the main move here, which is knight a3, right? This is the most popular move that we see, and it makes a lot of sense. You're just developing your knight, and you're really stopping the threat of knight c2. Going back, though, what if we don't see the computer move of queen d1, which I'm not really sure this is a very human move. And instead, we see a move like knight a3, right? This is very popular. We see players do this all the time online. Well, in that case, we're going to continue with a6. And again, black is simply better. Does bishop a4 work? It doesn't. It doesn't really help white at all because we have queen a5. And yet again, we're attacking the bishop, which is not even defended now. And no matter where this knight moves, okay, I don't care where you put it, we're going to have a check against that king on e1, right? So in this situation, this only helps black. Going back to this move of a6, what about a move like queen e4? This happens all the time in online chess. Well, now we can actually play queen c7. Shocking turn of events continuing to quickly develop our pieces. And notice if you play something like bishop a4, we have bishop b7 attacking the queen, actually forcing queen g4, because notice in this position, if bishop b7, White doesn't want to lose their pawn on g2, right? So they're going to have to bring the queen to g4, which drops e5. There's just so many issues there. So let's say white does take the rook on a8. Well, now we're going to throw in a check on d3. By the way, I recommend that you guys memorize a lot of these lines. Okay, I'll leave PGNs down below, which cover every single move that you'll see in this video. I recommend that you memorize those and also just watch this video through a few times and really try to get the lines and variations down, right? There's a lot of openings like the London system, for example, and that really just comes down to principles, right? Principles, strategy, fundamentals. An opening like this, we got to get our moves right, you know? So, okay, we play knight d3, attacking the king. And notice here, king d2 is the best move. Okay, now, if white does go with the move of king d2, in that instance, we can just take on f2, win the rook. On top of that, we're also just attacking the bishop at the moment. Bishop b7 ideas are in the air. White here is hanging on by a thread. But it turns out that if the king goes anywhere else, black is simply winning a queen. How is this? Well, let's first take a look at the move king e2. We're actually, in this case, I mean, why not get a check out of it, right? So take on c1 with check against the king, and then play this move of bishop b7. Notice the queen only has one square, and now we have a discovery against the queen, right? Bishop f3, giving up the bishop, but in return, snatching off this queen. We're actually sitting at even material, but black has a queen. White doesn't. I'm taking black every time, and this king on e2 is very prone to future attack. See, all against queen takes a8, we throw this check in, right? Again, king d2, thank you for the pawn and the rook. King e2, we just throw in a check. Then we have bishop b7 followed by a check on f3. What about a move like king f1? Well, in this case, we're not going to take on c1, right? Because there's no check there. Instead, we're just going to play bishop b7 right away, right? No nonsense. Make that queen go to a7 and then sack the bishop. Thank you for the queen. We're attacking f2. Black yet again with a crushing edge. See, so I'll going back to this original position. Remember, when you do play c5 against the accepted variation and you do see c4, you gotta take on d4, right? Whole idea being against queen captures, you have knight b4, and against pawn takes knight, you have queen a5 with check, 
and thank you for your minor piece. What about this move C3? Okay, we also see this quite a bit. White here just trying to hold their pawn structure together. Well, in this case, we're going to take on D4 yet again. If you take back with the pawn, Queen A5 would check. Thank you for the bishop. Black is simply winning this. So white here, they have to take back with the queen. And it's kind of funny. They play C3 thinking that they're fortifying their pawn chain, but they can't even take back with the pawn. Right? They got to take back with the queen. And now everyone's wondering why C3 was even played. In this case, we're going to play queen c7, another shocking move. Again, I recognize that some of these moves are very hard to find on your own, so I really encourage you guys to memorize these. Queen c7, notice here, if I move like knight f3, we're just going to develop, right? Play e6, play bishop e7, knight c6, attack the queen, put pressure on e5, look to activate this bishop later on, right? Maybe look at f5 pushes later in the game. But if the queen does capture on d5 yet again we have bishop b7 against the queen thank you for the pawn and for the rook more importantly black is winning this so guys a move like c3 may seem to really fortify white center but if you take they can't even take back with the pawn right they have to capture back with the queen and then against that you have that queen c7 idea looking as if you're hanging a knight but you have bishop b7 locked and ready to go right okay what about this move of bishop c4 just getting this bishop the heck out of the line of fire out of this queen a5 check threat well now there's not really a lot of traps but we're just going to try to play it as aggressively as we possibly can right a lot of the traps are gone now simply because this bishop dropped back we are going to play bishop b7 though right just developing this light squared minor piece looking directly at g2 if white here continues with something like knight f3 okay we'll play e6 we'll capture the center start to just really undermine this notice here we have two central pawns they only have one and here are a lot of players like going with bishop c5 this isn't the main computer move but i think you know playing bishop c5 and castling kingside is a great way to play here queen c7 on the way and this is really what you're trying to get right in the old sullivan gambit if none of the traps work if you don't get a crushing attacking win against the king at least you have a position like this right two bishops aiming directly at the king anyways a knight on t5 that's very strong a queen ready to get into the action putting pressure on e5 knight c6 ready to go and yet again we have a very fun game of chess ahead so look y'all going back to this original position of the old sullivan gambit if you take the pawn on b5 we have c5 and queen a5 check ready to go a ton of fun what happens if white doesn't take the pawn well as we covered if a move like c4 we're going to capture off this pawn right use our b pawn and capture off this flank pawn by the way guys in terms of pawns these two on e and d are the central pawns the f and the c pawns are considered flank pawns and here by giving up a b pawn we got rid of one of white's flank pawns now we're still going to play this move in knight b6 right so okay this bishop is kicking us around instead of the pawn but that being said we now have a much stronger grip on d5 because a minor piece is attacking it and not the c4 pawn right so in this instance we can play e6 and there's so many different things that we can do here we can play a move like c5 a5 bishop b4 but I personally just like playing knight c6, right? Rapidly develop and get bishop a6 and quickly stop this king from castling and continue with fun and aggressive attacking chances, right? This is really what we're trying to do here. And, uh, okay, I mean, we're just playing fun chess. And going back, y'all, what happens if white doesn't play c4? What if they just play quietly? They go, you know what? I don't know what you're trying to do there, but I'm just going to continue developing. Well, you have two choices. I think the more sound move would be something like a6, right? Play a6, defend b5, just continue to develop and try to get an active game out of that, right? Save your pawn and just continue developing. But if you want to, you can still go into your old Sullivan Gambit type stuff, right? Play c5 here. Whole idea being if you take on b5, which happens all the time online, queen a5 check yet again, we're simply crushing. And if d takes c5, we continue now with e6, right? Ready to capture back with the bishop. Bishop b7, knight c6, ready to go. Queen c7 coming soon. And yet again, even though they declined the gambit, we got exactly what we wanted. Hey, I wanted to finish this video out by giving a big shout out to my Patreon supporters for the month of January in 2023. Love you guys and appreciate the support a ton. If you haven't checked out the Patreon before, there's a lot of exclusive benefits that you gain by becoming a member. And I hope to see you over there.